you for letting me tune in. Thank you for letting me tune in. This is the sheriff of Montgomery, uh, Montgomery County, Harris, Harris County, Houston. I'm down here in Houston in the Harris County Sheriff's Department, and I'm here in the Lone Star State. There's the only room for one man to be inside that star. Oh, shit. Oh, damn, baby. There's only enough room for one man to be inside that Lone Star. And that other star right next to it. You got a dark star and a light star. And a pink star and a brown. Oh, baby. And a brown star. There's only one room for one sheriff to be inside that patrol car to die. <laughs> one in the back seat and one in the trunk. Okay. Never last lighting you. Sad, but it's true to lighting you. I tell you. It's going we gonna need a big casket for Derek, I ain't gonna lie. Cause he came down to the radio station, he got a real big stomach, yes he do like, a fat face and a fat stomach. And he gon' we definitely gonna need a we gonna need a heavy man's casket to put him in there when he falls. Like, Cause he might be breathing now, but BT Marshall was breathing too. You know, that's all I can do. There's nothing wrong with him. And same thing with Steve, like yeah. Steve is young and healthy, and Tavares Jackson was young and healthy, too. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Pop Smoke was young and healthy. You see what I mean? What I tell you, man, you don't have to be goddamn old to die. You know what I mean? You really don't. All you got to do is do some shit that you ain't really supposed to do. You know what I mean? Who knows what Tavares was doing? You know, Tavares... He probably disobeyed his daddy. He probably kissed his mama ass all the time, like Timo and Tamo. You ain't gonna listen to your daddy. Your daddy's what taught you what you know. Your daddy taught you the craft. Your, your daddy taught you how to be a man. You ain't gonna listen to nothing your daddy got to say? No. He didn't listen. He was sassy to his daddy. You know, he's down there listening to all them bras and shit. And guess what? Just like Steve, like, you yeah. You don't have to be old to die. All you got to do is be sassy. You know, you know that's all you got to be. Around there, listen to them clucks. And I'll tell you, them niggas, this, them niggas that work with the clucks, them niggas shine shoes so good. Like, I wouldn't mind having one of them niggas that shine my shoes. Like, them niggas that work for them white folks, baby. Man, you be wanting to knock them niggas. I ain't gonna lie. I done knocked a couple of them out my damn son. I be wanting to level them niggas. I ain't gonna lie. Especially when we talking man to man. You know what I mean? We playing man to man defense. You know what I'm saying? We pushing the ball down the court man to man. And you still up here sucking this white man dick and eating this white girl pussy. They ain't nowhere to be found. They ain't nowhere around here. And you sitting up there working for them. Like I put my leg in your ass. I ain't lying. I put a Lego block in your ass. A life size Lego block. Uh -huh. And I hate to talk to them like that, but they need to know it. You know, you know at the end of the day, you're going to be an old lady and an old man by yourself. And that white lady is not going to marry you. You know what I mean? You know, you doing what they want you to do, kissing their ass. When you ass get old like Johnny Carr, you're going to be right out there on Hall Street in a little bitty shotgun house. You know what I mean? Yeah. You think they're going to save you and put you where you're supposed to be for shining their shoes? Hell no. At the end of the day, you ain't gonna be nothing but a Uncle Tom, baby. This the way it go. It always been like that in the dirty town. See, that's why I went to uh, D.C. I had to go get my freedom papers. I really did. I didn't know that they still had us classified as slaves, but they did. Like, that. I went to D.C. on a shotgun mission. I didn't. I didn't have a whole lot of money at that time, but I went because I felt my my life depending on it, and it really did. I was living in the fucking parking lot, like, yeah. Everybody in my family got houses, cars, guest houses, room. Them niggas had me living in the fucking parking lot. Why? Because they was using my royalties to live off of. And they got me classified as a, as a retard. You know what I mean? And I had to go up there on that mission to see what's really going on. I kind of find out the niggas had us classified as a fucking slave, like, yeah. I had to go up there and get some real fucking freedom paper, like, for real. You know, I really had to. But Alabama's a low-down ass place, like, it really is.
It's real Alabama. Alabama is real low down, man. It really is. It's, it's a sad story. It's sad, you know. You know, you see these Negroes with these nice cars and stuff, and they think they better than you. Man, it's nothing but shackles, man. Don't look at them. It's like looking at Medusa. If you see a nigga with a haircut and a, and his his wife got a long hair weave and she got all her teeth and got all that Avon and Mary Kay on her face, don't look at them. It's nothing but a trap. It's it's like looking at Medusa. If you look at them and think if you can only be like them, you surely would die. Like them. So don't look at them and don't don't think about them. if I could be like them. Fuck being like them. Be yourself. Go to DC and get your freedom papers and get out of this shit. Oh, okay. That's what I do. If them motherfuckers ever tell me to leave and don't come back, baby, I'm gonna be bothered. I'm just doing what they're doing because they say it's cool. But if they free me and say I can leave, I ain't never come back. Just, you better believe I'm gonna be balling when I leave this mother. Shit, I might go live with the weed man. I ain't gonna lie. I might go to the go to the weed man and start selling loud pack. <laughs> Free me, motherfucker. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. Motherfucker, I'll be at, at, at uh, Second Chance the next day drive. Just put me out and see how it goes. And I, I'm going to make my first gangster rapper. My first gangster album. Bitches and white folks ain't shit. That's going to be my first album. It's going to be a, it's gonna be like a Dr. Dre classic. Bitches and white folks ain't shit. Ooh, babe. That shit will be banging out the trunk. Why I be pushing more lie around this bitch? You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking. I might pull up on your ass in a police car. I might come serve your ass a pound of lie in a police car, nigga. I'm gonna be the certified uh, gangster drug dealer, <laughs> the hardest drug dealer you ever seen, hardest gangster they ever seen them on there. Man, this nigga pull up in a police car with a pound of lie. You damn right, and a pistol too, a pistol and a vest. You know. You saying that I'm gonna I'm gonna make your drug dealer sit his ass down. You gonna be calling for the loud and the cane. I'm gonna pull up, motherfucker, with a lieutenant outfit on and that strap. I'm gonna have that beam on your face. What you said you want? Some loud? You know what? Thank you, cigar. Ain't got nothing. Thank you, cigar. Ain't, ain't got no time to play with you. You know your life is already short. I got a long, hard life to live. I got a whole lot of girls that want to be with me. And you slowing me down with that monkey ass shit. I ain't lying. You slowing me down. Mm -hmm. I got a whole lot of girls want to make love at least one time. And you come around with that monkey ass uh, racist shit. Nobody ain't got no time for that gay ass shit. Man. That shit played out. Every white folks I know, they hooked on opioids. You ain't got no time to be no racist. How you going to be a racist and you need some opioids? You don't even know where your next goddamn bottle of pills coming from. And you trying to be a cluck. Man, you need to sit your ass down somewhere. Damn, you hooked on ecstasies and mollies and crystal milk, and you trying to be a racist too. You can't be both. You got to get control of your goddamn milk habit first before you can be a Nazi, man. The drug dealer can, is your, the drug dealer is your gang leader. Shit, the man that's serving your ass that milk is, is your goddamn, is your clucks, motherfucker. The opioid dealer is your clucks leader, not the clucks. Yeah. Until you get control of your bad habits, you ain't shit. You ever leave that? And it's like that, but it's your lane, yeah. But you see, when your mammy put you out and she and, she, and she's the reason why you there anyway, she done jammed you up, you know what I'm saying? And then she then she put you out. That's when you be who you really you you have no choice. You do what you gotta do, survive, and say, fuck that motherfucker, you know what I mean? If you live or die, you go do what you gotta do, you know what I mean? Like I said, I'll pull up on your ass in a police car, nigga, with about four elbows allowed. I got damn two keys of uh, cane, motherfucker, 14 bottles of uh, opioids, got them illegal weapons and everything. You see what I mean? That's how I'm gonna do it, because should I show you how it goes? Is I refuse to live on the streets, you know what I mean? I refuse to be a, a lower class motherfucker. You know what I mean? I get it by any way I can get it. See. You up here living off of me and you trying to play a game? Let's shut him out. We gonna live off of him and shut him out. I'm gonna show you who gonna be shutting who out. I already shut the gas company down. You know what I, mean? I done shut the oil man down. You know what I mean? You see, Black, he ain't got nothing this morning. That motherfucker lost 93% 
of everything he worth, man. He ain't worth his last name ain't even worth nothing. That motherfucker last name ain't worth shit right now. They say that shit ain't worth a dollar a barrel, like. Man, I bet that nigga got some doo-doo in his <laughs> I bet that nigga got some doo-doo in his drawers, man. I bet everybody that's invested in oil, man, I bet they got blood in their drawers. I'm talking about in the back of their drawers. Ooh, baby. Boy, that's some sad news to hear, like, yeah. This is Banking Reimagined. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Terms apply. Rate comparison based on FDIC national rate. Capital One NA member. FDIC. And that reminds me, like, yeah. Man, I got ripped off so bad over there in the old town shopping place. Man, them niggas and them white folks sure enough tried to run me in the ground. I'm talking about with my Capital One account, with my stocks, bonds, my mutual fund. I'm talking about they tried to show me. Them niggas from the church and them white folks, they tried to show me how you supposed to do a nigga. This is how you do a nigga. You know what I mean? And I'm talking about niggas and white folks, they join hands to dog one man up. You know what I mean? I'm talking about they tried to rearrange my portfolio. They tried to steal my money. They they went and tried to get, they tried to steal my paintings, my writings, my books, all that shit. Then, and then, they gonna tell us, you can stay here long as you want to while you're going through these difficulties. Man woke up the next day, the motherfucker said, get your shit and get out and don't come back. You know what I mean? Say it, but it's true, lady, yeah. You see what I'm saying, lady, you know what I'm Sometimes you gotta get up and be a man, you know what I mean? The bitch put you out, get out. You know what I mean? Don't come back. And then you have to live your life where you don't need them for nothing. I don't care where they live and how they doing or what they ride. Don't go to them. Not for nothing. I'm talking about if you live in a pure ghetto, you make it to where they can't come out there. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And you separate yourself from them. You know what I mean? Like me, I lock all my shit down. You can't utilize none of my shit, none of my money, not, nothing with my name on it. All my all my mail is going somewhere else. Goddamn, I'd rather for them to tear it up than for you to get your hand on it. That's how serious this shit is. You know what I mean? So when they come out with the next vote, they can have you on there as a piece of shit. Right now. And the next one after that, too, for the rest of the year. They'll say that you the reason why the economy is down, not Narda. You know what I mean? You the reason why the economy. This amendment is requires state juries be unanimous, a ruling that overturns a decades-old precedent.